This week's Sunday morning message will be out of the book of Proverbs, chapter 6. My son, if you become surety for your friend, if you have shaken hands in pledge for a stranger, you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, and deliver yourself. For you have come into the hand of your friend. Go and humble yourself. Plead with your friend. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, and like a bird from the hand of the fowler. first wise lesson of this chapter is related to caring for one's own wealth. Solomon is urging his son to avoid financial entanglements by not entering a surety agreement. A surety agreement is a contract where the signee accepts responsibility for someone else's contractual obligations. So if his son does co-sign, he's gotten himself into a risky situation. He should try and get out of it, even if it causes humiliation. While this scripture is now prohibiting all forms of debt or lending, it strongly advises being careful not to waste what has been earned. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler, and your need like an armed man. Just like co-signing for an untrustworthy person might cause poverty, laziness can also cause a person to become destitute. Solomon tells his son to consider the ant, who, without supervision, works hard to meet its needs for the present and future. Unless a person works, poverty will overtake him like a robber overtakes his victim. Here again, the principles are common sense, and wasted opportunities cannot be made up. Worthless person, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. He winks with his eyes. He shuffles his feet. He points with his fingers. Perversity is in his heart. He devises evil continually. He sows discord. Therefore, his calamity shall come suddenly. Suddenly, he shall be broken without remedy. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sorts discord among brethren. A wise person refuses to stir up strife. As with all Proverbs, this is meant as general wisdom. Most of the time, those who stir up trouble are the most likely to suffer from it. God has a particular distaste for certain sins associated with troublemakers. A worthless person is described as someone who uses corrupt and deceptive speech and signals to sow discord. This list of God-hated attitudes includes arrogance, deceit, violence against the innocent, an evil heart, and lies. Summarizing these sins is the idea of someone who creates controversy or hatred among others. My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you awake, they will speak with you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law a light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. To keep you from the evil woman, from the flattering tongue of a seductress, do not lust after her beauty in your heart. 
nor let her allure you with her eyelids. For by means of a harlot, a man is reduced to a crust of bread. And an adulteress will prey upon his precious life. Can a man take fire to his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be seared? So is he who goes into his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her shall not be innocent. Solomon counsels his son to abide by his parents' teaching. These lessons are going to guide him and keep him from danger. As it is with other statements, this is a question of risk versus reward. Those who make good choices are not guaranteed a good outcome. Evil and chance still happen. Yet, it is very clear that those who walk a wise path are less likely to run into trouble than those who act stupidly. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is starving. Yet when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. He may have to give up all the substance of his house. Whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He who does so destroys his own soul. Wounds and dishonor he will get, and his reproach will not be wiped away. For jealousy is a husband's fury. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will accept no recompense, nor will he be appeased, though you give many gifts. One application of godly wisdom, both literal and symbolic, is safety from the adulteress. Wild men are more susceptible to seduction than women. The general idea applies to everyone. Solomon warns his son against falling prey to smooth talk, alluring beauty, and enticing glances. Solomon compares an illicit relationship to carrying fire next to your chest and to walking on hot coals. Solomon calls an adulterer senseless and self-destructive. Society may have sympathy for a starving man who steals bread, but not for a man who commits adultery. Adulterers risk suffering from revenge and shame. Thank you for watching. Next week we'll be continuing with the book of Proverbs, chapter 7. God bless.